Hi, from the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida, it's The Cube, covering Splunk.com 2016, brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. And welcome back to .com 2016 here on theCUBE along with John Furrier. I'm John Walls, continuing our coverage here, live streaming here throughout the day. Uh, talking to a lot of, a lot of partners here from in the Splunk community, also with a lot of customers. Uh, you know about Yelp. Uh, we might use it for dinner tonight, uh, but you probably use it at some course over the week. We use it all the time when we travel. Yeah, we do. Things, of course. Yeah, because we got to know, like, where's the best barbecue? Well, Texas, best, where's best. the best seafood Orlando, right? <laughs> right, we got to well, we know. In, we were in Barcelona and I, we did Yelp and we did a good restaurant, you did Yelp, and we went to this great restaurant. Greg Stewart was actually there. We didn't even know he was there. And the owner's like, all these Americans come in. I know, for some we're, reason, we get all these Americans. Because we're yelping, we're yelping maniacs. <laughs> Did they have a uh, sticker? <laughs> from from uh, Yelp Reservations, uh, two gentlemen with us, Chris Wainer, VP of Engineering, and uh, also Charles Gunther, Senior Software Engineer. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you, thanks for um, having us. For, let's just talk about reservations first. Um, you know, used to be seat me, moved on to reservations now. Um, for people who don't know um, about the service, you know, I'm, the extension that you've done with reservations, what's that all about? Yeah, so uh, Yelp Reservations is a way that we allow people to uh, transact, directly interact with the restaurant, make your reservation online, and combine the great data that Yelp brings to the table with the ability to actually integrate the reservation experience uh, and you know, be able to act right in the site and make a reservation right when you find the great restaurant. You don't have to go anywhere else, it's a one-stop shop. All right, so what's, what's your, uh, like your fundamental nightmare, or your fundamental problem then? Are you, you got, you know, volumes of data coming in, right? And, and uh, so you've got the customer interaction, you've got the, the facility, yep. you've got your rating system, you've got all that happening. Um, yep. What's your, like, your, like, gnashing, teeth gnashing uh, day like? I mean, the, the, the teeth gnashing problem, I think, is more of a teeth gnashing problem for all of Yelp and probably extensively across the industry, right? It's about the fact that we have a ton of microservices, and a lot of legacy code, and together those things generate tons of data, and we need to be able to see, you know, for us, uh, especially on the reservation side, the customer experience of being able to track through the life cycle of the customer's interaction with us, that those customers are getting an optimal experience, that you know, we know when we're having errors, we can act on them quickly, and then take that data back full life cycle and be able to do analysis on it, and bring the learnings that we've got from the live customer interactions back to improve the experience, right? But we generate so much data that that's a real challenge for us. So let's talk about the Splunk uh, problem, we get that on the table and kind of talk about architecture at the same time. So sure. the, the problem that you guys solved was you had to create a whole new system within the Yelp experience, which is kind of like, I won't say, maybe it's maybe the wrong word, off domain or different, different app, mm -hmm. which makes a lot of companies go through that problem. But you mentioned microservices, right? So I can imagine you have a lot of microservices within each application. Yep. How do you orchestrate that? Are you guys using Docker containers? Where does Splunk fit in? Lay out the architecture of how this all fits in. Sure, so uh, Yelp is largely uh, run off of a, a platform as a service um, product that we've built called Pasta. Uh, and it's actually built on top of um, uh, Apache Mesos and we use Marathon as the framework to run those, run those containers on top of it. And the large majority of those, micro those microservices are actually running on top of this Pasta platform. And really what that's about is in developer empowerment. We don't want them having to reach out to like the site reliability team or the operations team to say, I want to deploy this new code. We want to enable them to just check in some configuration, check in their code, and basically just let go. And that enables rapid deployment, that enables um, no blockages, and that enables exactly what you need in order to kind of scale out. So they're out. pushing code. They're pushing code without, without calling knowing. up and saying, hey, I need some authorization or whatever. Correct, correct. And I think one of the unique things that we've done at Yelp is that we're actually using this same concept with uh, Splunk. We're actually scaling out a lot of our fleet using the same concepts. And I think that's something that's unique or maybe something that we're doing uh, that a lot of people haven't tried out yet. Um, we'll actually be talking about that here at SwampConf. Uh, What's the tomorrow. marathon thing? Can you explain what marathon is? That orchestration? I think you're probably a better Yeah, yeah. Is that better orchestration of that. piece of yeah, it? it, it I mean, it is orchestration is one way to think about it. I think about it really as um, init for the data center. It's the thing that knows this is, these are the containers that compose my service. These are how they need to be run. These are how they need to be restarted. This is the current running version. How many of them are there? What are its needs in terms of resources? And then make sure that my fleet of services stay healthy, up, live, tracked, and exposed as an API for us to interact at a very simple high level to be able to 
deploy them, start them, stop them, scale them up, et cetera. So that's the reliability layer for the developer. Yeah. For the code pushing guys who want to use in the containers, right? So Marathon stabilizes that so they don't have to go to the... Nominally it's the scheduler against that compute cloud. So if, you, if you're thinking about running your own pass, and even if you're running it in the cloud or on your own hardware, we're trying to build a kind of our own cloud on top of that, right? We want to enable that kind of cloudy feel to our developers. Awesome. And Marathon really is what enables that, right? You, you push to it and it schedules against that, Perfect, against yeah. that cloud and it does the right type of packing against servers so you won't overload it, right? So this is nice comfort for the developer. Okay, talk about where Splunk fits in. So how are you Splunking the data? How does that fit into the plan? Yeah. Can you share a little bit about how you guys use the Splunk? Yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, one of the things that Yelp did a while back that is actually a great investment but something that I think is relatively unique is we took the time when we rolled out our microservices strategy to centralize all of our log data and a lot of other stuff all together in a single place, um, which then gives us the ability to connect Splunk rapidly and ingest the streams really, really easily. Part of that developer empowerment is making sure that best practices are baked into the services when they get pushed, and that includes logging. So yeah. this makes it so that when we push service, we know that the service is going to emit logs in a way that is immediately available to all the downstream analytics tools, which for us includes Splunk. The, the interesting part for, for the marathon usage, specifically to tie that together, is that the centralized bus that the logs uh, stream to, we ultimately then consume in a service that's deployed on that same development platform. So we consume, our Splunk, our Splunk forwarders are running inside a marathon hosted platform that then consume off the centralized log bus. So you guys get that data, you can see what's going on relative to any kind of events going on with the uh, scheduler? Ab absolutely. All right, well this is our first interview we had here at the dot .com that's brought in kind of the microservices angle, which is, we love talking about that. Um, so let's talk about what you guys have in the environment. Is it on-prem, you guys have Amazon, what are you guys using in the cloud? Where, How are uh, you guys uh, handling your, uh, your backbone and your, uh, your infrastructure? Absolutely, so we're a hybrid solution, so we actually have uh, physical facilities and we also are very heavily invested in the cloud. We're an AWS uh, partner, we use AWS extensively, so a lot, a lot of our services at this point are pushing more and more heavily cloud-based. Are you moving workloads on-prem to the cloud? Uh, yeah, Flex, what we're trying to do actually is develop it so that the cloud and the on-prem are peers to each other and we can relatively smoothly move between the two of them. Um, and we're really, getting, we're really getting close. We're using a lot of things like Terraform and um, <clears throat> things like that that really enable us to quickly be able to, with a single command, spin up an entire facility uh, effectively on demand. Uh, this is awesome. You guys going to be at reInvent this year? Uh, we absolutely will be. Uh, well, the Cube will be there, so look for us. We're going to have one big stage, maybe two. Um, well, we're always a great show. It's, kind of, it's probably one of the best shows. It's kind of like Splunk, right? Everyone's kind of rocking and partying, having a good time, geeking out. Um, Next level, real time has been a big part, certainly on mobile. Mm. Getting that data in, you guys do anything with in memory? How are you guys handling kind of streaming of data? Does that, does that fit into the plan at all? Uh, it absolutely does. I mean, we, uh, one of the things that I think is most important to us at Yelp is being able to detect errors as fast as possible, right? When we push code, we need to know, as we canary changes, as they sort of go into limited distribution and then they start rolling out around data centers, we need to know quickly and, re and repeatedly with very low latency if things are wrong with the, new with the new code release. And we use a lot of Splunk real-time features in order to track our error rates and uh, during the deploy process yeah. specifically to be able to see if the site's healthy. You guys have been a great company to watch because it's been like born in two movements. Okay, you're, you're pre-DevOps, early DevOps, and now what I call post-mature DevOps, sure. if, I, if you could call it that category. I think we're almost post-mature. I think pretty much everyone realizes cloud-native uh, DevOps is the way to go, no mm -hmm. doubt about that. What did you guys learn? What can you share with folks in terms of scar tissue, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tricks that you've learned, you've developed, because a lot of um, folks like Yelp, I'm sure you guys have done things on your own, built your own stuff, tripped on some stuff, hit some speed bumps, and scaled stuff. So as you scale, what are the big learnings? How would you, what would you share? Share uh, some insight. I think, I think the biggest thing that I would say is everything has to be code. And that is all the way from the configuration into the actual data center deployments, centralize, get it code reviewed, get it checked in, automate everything. And you know, until you get to the point where like, now we're getting, due to the efforts of a lot of really smart folks inside the organization, where you can actually execute a single command and spin up an entire facility, um, I don't really think that you're there to the point of maturity that like, you can, you can uh, you know, really call yourself cloud native, I guess, to be perhaps overstepping. But 
you know, that is that is the, the thing. That's the outcome you want. That's the outcome that people yeah. should strive for. I agree. Yeah, I absolutely. agree. That is that is the goal. And to Chris's point, one of the things that you you kind of struggle with as you go from like on-prem to cloud is the tendency is when something's happening to go onto the box directly and make that change as an operations admin, right? Like you don't necessarily have those processes. And as you move to cloud, those boxes don't persist. It's going to go away and it's going to come back later as something else entirely, mm -hmm. fresh and new. Which means that all that manual configuration you've done is just poof. You got to you got to make that. It's instantly gone, right? So unless you've checked all that stuff in and you have a repeatable process for doing the exact same thing, you're going to do yourself a disservice. And that's really what it, what it comes down to, DevOps, the practice, is repeatability through code. Yeah, and I think it also makes the, the job fun. I mean, when you automate away those tasks, one, is there's a legit reason to do it, as you yep. mentioned, because mm -hmm. you want to have this just spinning up, but also more fun, you get to work on cooler stuff. Um, what are some of the cool things that you guys have working on right now? Because, you know, Scaling up at like Yelp service, you've got a lot going on, right? You have a lot of data. Um, what are some of the cool things that you guys have done? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I think probably the, the most- the coolest thing. The coolest thing. <laughs> ah, so, I mean, the thing that we talk about a lot that I think is probably the coolest thing, which is more, which is more intricate, is the way that we actually manage our iPad fleet. So, Yelp Reservations is a product that is Online, it is an online avail, uh, availability engine for you guys, consumers, but the majority of the product is actually restaurant facing. And uh, what we, restaurants have very flaky networks um, and they need really high availability of their data. So what we had to do was make it so that our iPads can operate fully offline and then be able to resynchronize with our, uh, with our facilities. And so what we've actually built is a multi-master replication protocol where the iPads actually act as replication peers to our facility uh, in the cloud. And so we end up uh, being able to have those iPads disconnect from the network, operate successfully, reconnect, merge their data changes, and both sides are seamlessly working so together. You, you take the uh, Achilles heel of offline mm -hmm. and flip it around as an advantage. Yes, yeah. absolutely. On top of that, one of the coolest things about that iPad app is we actually build a binary database that we're able to lay directly down on the file system for iOS. So instead of like downloading JSON, parsing it, pushing yep. it through, and kind of the performance that you yep. have of working with a very like small CPU, we're actually just handing it a pre-baked database, downloading it direct to disk and saying, run. Which is, I think, is just that's tremendous. down and dirty, man. That's like the old school when I went to college. <laughs> down machine language, getting yeah. in the way overhead issue, right? Correct. I mean, you Correct. don't want to have that overhead because, again, because of the network issue. Because you might have a if you yeah. got a, if you got to download a thirty meg file and you got your network flipping in and out, mm -hmm. it's problematic. So you take that efficiency and what do you shift it to for the? For well, the we shift it into the cloud. We actually take we, uh, the workload of building that binary database is shifted into the cloud. And that ultimately is, you know, when you walk into the restaurant, this is about the customer's experience, right? Nobody cares about all this tech stuff with the iPads. What they want is to walk into the restaurant, smoothly go, welcome sir, let me show you to your table. <laughs> they don't want to wait for an iPad to download the database. But, I mean, you, you just hit on it, Chris, a little bit ago. You said restaurants have kind of flaky websites, right? Yep. Well, so you're seeing all kinds of different levels of sophistication. Yep. As well as from consumers. I don't know how many millions you, know, you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, so what does that create for you in terms of making sure this works? You know, uh, and then from a security standpoint, knowing that, that you got a lot of targets, a lot of a lot I'm of. I'm sure you uh, get hacked all the time. So yeah, you guys so must get what, what is, uh, Yelp must get I mean, attacked. What does that create for you? The kind uh, of challenges you can face. I mean, the the the, ch the challenges, the, the diversity of the consumer and the diversity of the restaurant sophistication really means that we have the thing has to be lights off stable, right? And it has to be, it has to clearly tell the user what's going on, and we have to have a team on our side that we, that we maintain a very detailed playbook for them to be able to you know, correctly diagnose, handle those user issues, and just, it's all about the customer's experience. Um, but it can't be, you know, we, take, we try and take the technology out of it as much as possible as it faces the restaurant and consumer. Um, to the security question, we recently opened a public bug bounty. We are a very secure, security first organization. I'm actually really proud of Yelp Security. I think we do an excellent job. Guys, final point before we wrap up. What's, uh, what's your advice just people that are evaluating Splunk? Why is Splunk integral to your business? Get the plug out for Splunk. Let's get that out there. I think the biggest thing that Splunk offers to you uh, is that it enables you to fail fast. And that's something that someone always says you'll hear from a developer constantly. The successful developers, you hear them say it consistently. Fail fast, fail often. But you're typically scared of your failure because you don't know where that failure is, right? Splunk really enables you to, in the middle of that fire, figure out exactly what's happening, roll it back, and make, a, make an informed decision. And once you have that confidence in your ability to see the failures, you're going to be confident in failing, in trying new things. Well, you iterate faster. 
What's that? And you iterate and faster. And you iterate much faster. And you become better faster. And you stay agile. And really, like that's, those are the three buzzwords you hear in the industry. Yeah. Like agile, yeah. fail fast, fail often, right? And Splunk really enables three of yeah. those things. Be more agile, fail fast, get to the cloud. Guys, thanks so much, appreciate it. But I do not want to fail fast with my dinner choice tonight. <laughs> so let's make sure we knock that one out of the can park, I cut okay? the line on all the Yelp Maybe reservations? Maybe can help me with that too. <laughs> <laughs> Back with more.com 2016 in just a bit here on theCUBE.